It's great to have you join us for another episode of The View from Hampton U. We've got quite a show for you today. Yes, we're going to continue to highlight the incredible work Hampton University's faculty and students are doing. And we're going down memory lane with several HU alumni who returned for homecoming. Hope you enjoy. We are here at Bovanti Cosmetics and Spa with Mr. Bohannon and his daughter Markel, who is a graduate of Hampton University. Now, as a Hampton University alum, talk about the name Bovanti and how Hampton University kind of cultivated your business experience. Okay, well, Bovanti, we are actually a 31-year-old business. My mother and father started Bovanti in 1982. The name B-O, it comes from our last name, Bohannon. B is for victory and A-N-T-I, my mother's first name. So the term Bovanti means a gift to a beautiful woman. To a beautiful woman, mm -hmm. and you can find many of those at Hampton University. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, how did the Hampton experience help shape you as a businesswoman? Well, Hampton, you know, our motto is a standard of excellence. So, being a business person as well as a student at Hampton, that's all we did. We made sure we strive for excellence in our business because we did set up on Fridays in the student center. We did that for five years with my sister got her MBA here. So we were here for five years setting up in the student center. So that's what we gave our customers, we gave our employees the standard of excellence. Now what's it like being here, back here at Hampton Roads, opening Bovanti right down the street from Hampton University? It is absolutely fabulous. It's great because the students can come right across the bridge, get their brows, their lashes, makeovers for all types of events that we hold here at Hampton. So, I mean, it's a perfect location. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Bohannon, I want to ask you, what is it like to have two daughters come out of Hampton University and come and jump right into the business and start working with you? Well, you're saying right after Hampton University, but Marquis, which is the oldest daughter, uh, when she was about five or six, she always said she's going to take over Bavante. Wow. So, I mean, at that age, she has always said that. And Markel and her have always been business ladies mm -hmm. since they were about five or six years old. So, all the different things in business that they're doing now, these are their ideas and their concepts. I guess we just gave them a vehicle to express themselves in business. But my wife and I can tell you, we never encouraged them, never pushed them. Uh, we were in London doing a show in Europe, and uh, she needed some extra help. So that's when Marquis, the oldest daughter, started uh, doing makeup and from there. But they've been business ladies all their lives. Now I know your daughters know, and your wife know, the importance of beauty and makeup and skincare. But as a male, how important is male skincare? Because I know you all do offer those products as well. Yeah, and we have a uh, lotion for men too. But most of the time, men, when you want a lotion, you just go pick up anything. But we <laughs> have the Levante Man Lotion, which is excellent. It strengthens the man's skin. It has a little alloy in there to protect it and heal it also. But, you know, being a male in this, I guess I'm more or less the business partner, a uh, businessman. Uh, a lot of people, they see me around, the first thing they ask me, do I know how to do makeup? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just a businessman. I pull it all the Together. But I am fortunate to have a beautiful wife, and she's done an excellent job with her daughters as far as teaching them to be good ladies, good women first. Hampton University, uh, I really, I knew of Hampton. I graduated from North Carolina Central, so we knew of Hampton okay. Institute. Right. But when Marquis said she was coming to Hampton, I said, whoa, we're out of Atlanta, Georgia. That's 600 miles from here, and I was really concerned. But as I said before, she's always had her mind fixed on what she wanted to do. And, and in the 11th grade, she wanted to go to Hampton because they had a five-year MBA program. So uh, Hampton's been a good, good source for them, a good source in our lives. And, Personally, myself and my wife, we really appreciate the experience we got at Hampton. And, and we're standards of excellence also, and that's what Hampton promoted and preached also. Exactly. Good stuff. Now, also, Bavanti is not just cosmetics. You guys aren't just makeup. You have your hands in a lot of different businesses, a lot of different industries. What else is it that you guys do? Well, uh, I can expound a little bit because uh, I was there when we first started <laughs> back in 1982. One of the things, everything that Bavanti does is fashion and beauty related, so let's keep that in mind. So basically, by doing this big fashion event here, we're basically branding our product, Bavanti. Uh, we have the beauty tour. Everybody's seen our bus going around. We do a lot of trade shows. We gather all of our customers' names and addresses that develop a mail order department. So people call back and want to reorder their products. Uh, photo, we have a photo studio. And we do film and we do television. You can go to Bavante TV and see all the television shows we've done from here to Europe and in the Caribbean. Uh, Sally Beauty Supply, you go in there, all the African American ladies, we did an ad campaign. So, photography, modeling agency, the largest minority on modeling agency out of Atlanta, 
Uh, one thing we want you all to know is when the models come in town, you'll definitely know the boxes in town. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum height is 5'10", and most of them are 6 feet, 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 nice. So they are towering over the men. And right. we, we come in town, we make a statement, and we want everybody to know that Bobaj is in town. We really push excellence. Um, I've always been a businessman. If I can't have a lot of something, I just want the best quality, and I'll take a little bit. Now, with the fashion show, that's one of you all's largest events, you all give scholarships with the fashion show. How exciting is that, you know, you being a former college student, knowing that you're giving back to someone else? It's absolutely wonderful to be able to give back. Uh, I know myself have, I didn't get a chance to really do scholarships, so it's awesome that we can actually give back to a fellow student here at Hampton to give them a scholarship, so it's a way to take off the, the, the stress of owing money to college, so it's awesome. And it's going towards student leadership program also. It's going towards student leadership. And Markel and Markel was student leadership. Okay, Markel, now your dad touched on the uh, the fact that you and your sister were in the student leadership program. What did that mean to you as a student at Hampton? Being in the student leadership program was absolute fun. It actually taught you the professionalism of an actual student. Wednesdays we had to dress up in our business mm -hmm. professional attire and whenever we came together we were a family, we were a unit and that's what made everybody want to come to become a student leader. Now what else can we expect from Bovanti? You know, you know you have the fashion show, you have your beauty cosmetics line, you have this beautiful store. What's up next for you all? What can we expect from you? A lot of big things. We are actually going to be expanding the brand. We're going to be having a lot more Bovanti locations in a city near you. So anybody who's interested in Bovanti, let us know. We will be glad to open a location near you. That's one of our big things that we're focusing on for 2013 is expansion. Well, I know between here and me traveling to Maryland and New York and California, I'm looking forward to coming in and getting some massages. Absolutely. Um, some man lotion. Some man lotion. <laughs> Definitely going to need that. Now, if people want to order products or they want to get in contact with you, where would they go? Okay, you can go to bovanti.com. That's B-O-V-A-N-T-I.com. And we're also, um, you can call us up. The number is 404-209-0909. Now I see right here you're holding a book with looks like three beautiful sisters on here. But let's talk about this book and how you all gotten into publishing. Well, first of all, it looks like it's three beautiful sisters there. And a lot of people ask me, do I have three daughters? No, I do not. The one in the middle is my wife. I know she looks awfully young. I did not <laughs> rob the cradle, but <laughs> she just has this beautiful thing going on. And she decided to write her book uh, a year ago. And uh, we all used to kind of kid her about writing a book, and this is something for everybody. I tell everybody, everyone has a book in them, whether you realize it or not. But she met Oprah about a year ago at Spelman College, and when she met Oprah, Oprah was telling her and everybody in the audience that we do all these things, and she does all these things on a worldwide basis. Everyone can at least do something for your own community. And when she said that, that kind of struck a nerve to her, and she came back from that meeting really excited about it, and she decided to write a book. So a year later, this is her book, Secrets from a Beauty Star. And we was at the Delta Sigma Theta convention this past July. She sold tons of books. We had to keep going back and getting more and more. But it's an excellent book. It's about Secrets of Beauty Star, but more than just feeling beautiful on the outside, it's talking about what you should do on the inside to stay healthy. Well, I, I know. Being with Stephanie, her is my partner slash co-host. You know, um, she keeps me on my P's and Q's. <laughs> and, and talking about partners, you guys actually partner with a lot of different businesses. Can you tell us about who you partner with? Yes, uh, Bavanti, we're kind of a trailblazer when it comes to promoting and doing fashion shows, doing events, and uh, people like to attach themselves with our brand. If you're winning or you're doing something well, of course, everybody want to be a part of it. Everybody want to go to the best game in town. Right. So first of all, I really like to say uh, Upscale Magazine, which is a partner, they've been with us probably 25 or 30 years. And this particular publication is owned by Bronner Brothers, Bernard Bronner. And uh, everywhere we go, we take the name. We've been doing promotions all over, and we really enjoy and love the experience we've had with them. Bronner Brothers also own Bronner Brother Hair Product, which is BB and New Expressions. And we've been working with them probably like two years or so. One of our steadfast clients is uh, Fantasia. Not the artist, this is Fantasia Hair Company out of uh, 
New Jersey, and they've been in business probably six to some years. And in fact, they were referred by Vron Brothers, and we started working with them probably 20 some years ago. So Bavante has this thing, and as a businessman, I believe in being loyal to people who work with you. Mm -hmm. So we, once we establish a relationship with a company or somebody, we're gonna stick with you for a long time. So we really enjoy that. Well, thank you very much, and we're looking forward to great things. We'll be back, you're watching The View from Hampton U. The View from Hampton U will return after these messages. The View from Hampton U, bringing you in-depth interviews, cutting edge research, amazing sports highlights, faculty and student profiles, and much more. I'm Stephanie Sutton. And I'm Joseph Walters. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The View from Hampton, Hampton U. U. It's always great to experience the thrill of returning to our beautiful home by the sea. My co-host Stephanie Sutton had the pleasure of talking with several alumni who returned to HU for homecoming. So I'm here with Eddie Henderson, class yes. of 2008. You're back for homecoming, five 2013. Years. It's been five years, I yes. know. So how do you feel being back? I mean, a lot of things have changed around Hampton's campus. A lot of things have changed. You know, we got the cafeteria that yes. they've been rumoring since I was in school. Right. You know, so we finally got that. And yeah. it's just really exciting to see the new students and the new energy that's on campus. And of course, like the old friends and yeah. faces and stuff like that. So what do you think about the transition from leaving college and now it's back? Like, how, how do you feel being back now, looking on the outside, looking in? I feel amazing, you know, just this just now in this period of time is just so open and there's so many opportunities for us out there just to really go out and make our name and stake our claim on this world you know it's like every generation has a movement yeah. you know and it comes from us and we're about to start a new one right, right. now so I'm really excited. Now about speaking that. of new movements you graduated five years ago yes and let's talk about what you're doing now I heard you doing some big things. Yeah I'm doing some music you know I'm a hip-hop artist now uh, my hip-hop name is Amin Ra the Sun God and he was a God of the ancient Egyptians who created other gods and set them on their way. And so that's kind of my mission in life, you know, my purpose, you know, to raise the consciousness of the world to its highest degree so we can really create perfection here. So I'm here with Shantae, class of 93, Onyx 2. You're here for Homecoming 2013. Let's talk about your homecoming experience. What have you been to? What have you enjoyed so far? Yesterday I came into the union. I don't know if it was a party or what, but <laughs> it was totally different from when I was here. Now it is your 20 year anniversary. How was your, how was your experience at, at Hampton and how did it cultivate you to the person that you are today? Um, actually, I said I wanted to come to a, a historically black college university, so that has helped me. I now teach, so I also bring that into my experience in my classroom. I'm here with a legendary and a friend, Jack Manning. <laughs> Welcome back to Homecoming 2013. Thank you very much. How have you been enjoying everything so far? It's a, it's a whole new world here at Hampton. It's, it's quite a change from when I was an undergrad. <laughs> Besides the rain, everything is great. It's good to see yeah. everybody and I'm um, having a great time. Now you are really big into photography. I know Hampton uses you for so many events. How is it <laughs> kind of capturing the whole Hampton experience now that you're on the outside looking in? see life on the other side of the lens, it's interesting. Right? You get a unique perspective. Um, since I was a student here and I worked here for a long time, I kind of know, you know, the ins and outs of this place. So it's it's really cool. I am here with Tana Johnson, Quintessin Six. You're back here for Homecoming 2013. Talk about how excited you are to be here, kind of see some old faces that you haven't seen in a while. It's definitely a great time. I just got here uh, recently, a few hours ago. Oh so I've seen a few people, haven't seen much. But I'm still getting everybody in the right. student center and run into me. So what are some of the things that you look for when preparing for homecoming? Like, what are you looking forward for Hampton homecoming? I always look forward to the alumni band. That's probably my favorite part, to see the alumni come back. And they've been practicing all week, uh, getting ready. Remember our old moves, creating new moves, the reuniting with everyone. I also love to see the um, everyone tailgating. Right. The food is awesome. And just seeing the new classes at Hampton as they prepare now it is a whole new generation here now. What are some things that you think they should walk away with for the Hampton experience? Um, it's definitely, they say it's uh, education for life. It's education inside and outside the classroom. You make your life long friends. Right. Um, I still talk to my friends from Hampton every single day, um, as well as you're building a, a network right. to go on and move into to your career and to lean on that network. 
network of Hamptonians, whether it's uh, informal or formal, right. through the Alumni Association or whatever else you can get from Hampton. So maybe what's a little bit of advice you would give to some maybe like freshman or sophomore to just enjoy their entire Hampton University homecoming weekend? I, I definitely say to take in everything. Okay. Just live every moment and, and enjoy what this experience is. Um, because it, you can't relive it at right. all. You can have the memories and if you, it is what you make of it. So right. if you make those memories, you'll have tons of good times to remember as you go through life. I am here with Teddy Reeves on X7, our class. Yes. It's our five year reunion. Yes. Talk about how excited you are to be here for Hampton University Homecoming. I am extremely excited. I mean, we are five years out of school, which is an amazing experience, an amazing feat. And so I'm thrilled as a class leader to be back and to see my classmates, right. but to also see the students that are here right now. So I am, I am, it's totally amazing. Now, for those who don't know who might be watching, talk about what you were involved in here at Hampton, because you were all over the place. I was all over the place. Um, I was, uh, over the Miss Hampton pageant. Um, I was over the Miss Hampton fashion show. I was a peer counselor. I kind of ran the gamut of different things here at Hampton. So, an English major, and so writing a singing thesis, which was very important singing year. And so, um, I was stretched a little thin, but I enjoyed, for me, that was really a right. part of the, the college experience, as well as academic. Right. Now, you've been out for five years, so it hasn't been that long, but Hampton has changed. Yes. So, what are some things that you think um, the Hampton students now need to take away from the entire Hampton University experience, per se? Do not rush it. Um, I want to come back. <laughs> stay in this moment. You will never get these four years back. Right. Um, this is a hotbed for everything. This is a cultural hotbed. This is an intellectual hotbed. This is, these are the future leaders right. of America. And so you are in a space where you can, can collaborate. You're in a space where you can bounce ideas. You're in a space where people love you. That right. um, The world is not that loving always. And so I learned going to a majority institution when I left that you know this cultural setting, this place that gave me my foundation, this place that really gave me my start, um, the world's not like that always. Right. And so really live in the moment. Live in this place. Take advantage of every opportunity that's here. Study abroad. I did that at Princeton, which I wish I would have done in Hampton. Well, congratulations on all that you're doing, and thank you for sharing your homecoming experience thank with you. us. Thanks for that. We'll be back. You're watching The View from Hampton U. There was an article where proton therapy was referred to as the holy grail of cancer treatment. I could leave my office, have the treatment, and drive back to work in about an hour and 10 minutes. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. It was almost uh, too easy. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute today. Hi. My name is Kunio Sayanagi. I'm a planetary scientist at Hampton University. So far, the most exciting stuff I've done is on the big storm that blew up on Saturn. It started in December 2010, and that's the biggest storm we've ever seen in the solar system. The storm itself covered enough area to uh, bigger than the diameter of Earth. So that was a huge storm, and I got to analyze it. Um, from the beginning of the storm to the end. So that's the most significant result I've had so far. I received images from NASA's Cassini, um, Cassini mission. It's an orbiter around Saturn. Um, it's been in orbit, let's see, around that planet since 2004. I joined the mission team in 2008. I am in charge of uh, analyzing images of day side of Saturn. So Cassini is an orbiter. It's in orbit around Saturn, so it's going around and around, right? When Cassini is on the day side of Saturn, basically the side of the sun, um, I get brightly illuminated clouds. Um, that's what I study. So um, as part of this team, I basically handle the day side images. And then there's another person who's looking at night side images. And at the night side, you can see lightning flashes and auroras um, near the poles. So there are a lot of things we can do. And on the day side, what I do is I analyze the clouds, how the clouds move, how the, um, the morphology changes. So there are a lot of jet streams and vortices that affect the motion of the clouds and then the patterns of the clouds. So I try to figure out what those clouds are doing. I've always been excited about astronomy. Whenever I looked up at stars, I find it really exciting because when you see a star, that means there's nothing between your eyes and the stars, right? 
that's why the light can travel from far far away to your eyes i just find that concept super exciting there's nothing in between the stars and you that's empty space right that that concept of space has always fascinated me so i always wanted to study something astronomical and then after college i was fairly open-minded about my topic of research going to grad school is just like looking for a regular job you can't just focus on or you can't be just determined um, to work for one particular company, right? You want to be open-minded about what kind of job you want to do, what kind of tasks you want to handle, what kind of responsibilities you want to have. So um, when I went to grad school, I was fairly open-minded about what kind of objects I wanted to study. I, wanted to, I knew I wanted to study something astronomical, but beyond that, I just looked for opportunities. I looked at what's, what was available, and the most promising topic I found was a research on Jupiter and Saturn. So that's, what, that's how I got into the research. Um, and that's how I've been keeping myself going. Hi, my name is Leslie Gooden. I'm a broadcast and English major, minor in pre-law. Emmy Fire is a dance team. We dance in the band. We're part of the band. I've been on for two years now. It is definitely a lifestyle and it is not for everybody. We dance five days a week. We practice and sometimes we'll have up to two to four performances depending on that week. Our practices are from 445 until whenever we're done. We also do outside performances. Sometimes we'll be asked to do different events on the campus. So it really all depends. We've had up to like six performances in one week before. Band camp is conditioning. This is the time where the team and new potential members to be on the team come together. So this is where you kind of get the feel of the whole team. Also, we're with the band. So we go over different commands, different routine songs. So also it takes a you know, it takes time to get used to dancing in front of a live band. And during this process there, we all have to audition every year. So at the end of band camp, we'll, we will all audition. Even if you are an old member, you have to audition every year. Balancing my studies and also going to practice and with performances, and honestly, if it wasn't for my teammates, um, they all keep me on schedule because they understand our practice times. So we all have study halls on Mondays, or uh, we'll go to someone's house and stay together, or if there's like an event or something like that where I need to go to class, I'm excused from it, or and if I need some extra help, one of my teammates will you know, kind of keep me up to date on what new things we've been doing in practice if I missed it. The training on Emmy Fire is very rigorous. It's mental and it's also physical. So if we're lacking in either perspective, our coach will have someone bring in maybe like a trainer or something and we'll go from there. Also at the beginning of each practice, we have to run two laps and we'll stretch for an hour. So it really depends on the structure of the team that year. My favorite style of dance will have to be modern dance because it's kind of like a mixture of everything. You get to put your emotions in it and I feel like you can take from each genre of dance and put it in modern, so that's my favorite. I'm very interested in television and film. Also, I'm interested in law. Um, those are actually my majors, so hopefully after school, I'll be accepted to law school and go on from there, maybe produce a film or something like that. Five years from now, hopefully, I'll be graduating from law school, maybe landing into hopefully a dream job like everyone else, so we'll see. Join us next week when Brett Pulley, Dean of Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications at Hampton University, is our guest co-host. He'll lead a discussion about the importance of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math in the black community. We'll see you soon. With the brain tumor, there was that possibility of blindness, especially with my daughter's wedding coming up. You want to be able to see those things. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. It is the absolute best way to go. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute today. Join us next week for another exciting episode of The View from Hampton U.